G'day guys, my name is Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, by request, today I'll be teaching you how to play Small Bump by Ed Sheeran. For the basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you will need a capo on the third fret of your guitar. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you're stuck in a rut and you want to take your skills to the next level, then be sure to check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course which teaches you technique, scales, theory, finger style, and exclusive content you won't find here on YouTube. Now back to Small Bump, and in this video I'm going to teach you two different ways of playing this song. The first way is the finger picked version, and the second way is an easy chord strummed version for the beginners out there. Now I will add that version 1 is a little tricky. Ed Sheeran has a very freestyle based way of playing guitar, which includes a lot of percussive elements, as well as finger picking. So this will be a little tricky and will challenge a lot of you, but I will break it down and simplify it as best as I can. So let's jump into the studio version of the verse. And we have two lines of tab here. Now we're gonna start off with an E minor chord shape like this, and we're gonna lead in the song with just an open sixth string. Now this occurs just before the one beat. So if our timing is one and two and three and four and, it's actually occurring on the end beat after the four. So it goes one and two and three and four and. And then on the two beat afterwards, we're going to be doing a slap. So to do the slap, we're just gonna drop the side of our thumb onto the bass strings of our guitar. And by dropping it on there, your strings will hit the metal strips and it will make that percussive noise. Now there is one little thing that we need to add here and it's not technically necessary but it does make it sound more true to the original. And what Ed Sheeran will do is that as he slaps he'll also flick his index and middle finger and the edge of the nail will hit these higher strings. And you'll want to focus on the third and second strings, those two strings. It doesn't really matter if you don't hit them, you can hit some of the other strings as well, but you want to be aiming for second and third, like that. So it's a slap, and at the same time you're doing a flick. So that's on the two beat, and then shortly after, you need to get your fingers back into position. The thumb's going to be playing the fifth string, the index is going to be playing the fourth, and the middle finger is going to be playing the third string. So you'll be plucking one string after the other. So and three and. So they're all on those beats. Two and three and. Now ideally after that slap, you wanna already have your thumb here on the fifth string. So you can continue on, pluck that fourth and then third. After that, we're just gonna be doing another percussive slap, but this is a normal one. We don't need to flick at the same time. And so far we have this one two and three and four and one and two and three and four. After that slap, we're going to change chord positions, right? So you're gonna keep your index finger where it is, lift your middle, your ring finger is gonna come over and hit the fourth fret relative to the capo of the fourth string. Now this shape is called an E minor add nine. Now we just need to pinch the fifth and fourth strings together. So you need to do that with your thumb and your index finger. And that's on the end beat after the four. And then we're gonna be plucking the open third string with our middle finger. And that's on the end beat after the one. And then we have another normal percussive slap after that. We're gonna quickly change to a C add nine chord shape, just like this. And we're going to be again pinching the fifth and the fourth strings but you'll have your index finger lifted up to start with. But as you pinch those two strings, your index finger will come down onto that fourth string, like that. You're gonna lift your index finger after that, and then we're gonna quickly pluck the open fourth string. So it just sounds like this. And then we have another slap after that. And so far we have this. One and two and three. Now after that slap on the four beat, we are going to change positions again. 
to a G major. So from the C add nine, we just move these two fingers up one string like that. Now we're going to be pinching the sixth string and the fourth string at the same time. And that's on the end beat after the four. And then we're going to do a muted slap, but this is a muted slap with a flick again. And we're gonna do that on the two beat. And one and two. And then from here, we'll wanna get our thumb to the fourth string because then we'll be plucking the fourth string, third string, and then second string. So fourth with your thumb, third with your index, and second with your middle. And for this G section, and one, and two, and three, and four. Now after that slap, we're then going to take our index finger and just put it on the second fret of the third string. And we're gonna be pinching the fourth and third strings together. Now, as you pinch these two strings, you're gonna quickly slide up your index finger to the fourth fret of the third string. We're gonna hold that there, and then on the end beat after the two, we'll pinch those two strings again and slide back down. After the slide, we hold that out, and then we're gonna pull our index finger off that second fret to hit an open third string. And then our index finger comes down on the second fret of the fourth string, we'll be plucking the fourth string and then the open third and that lick all together. One and two and three and four and. And in total for the first line of the verse, this is what it sounds like. One and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now for the second line of tab, thankfully it's almost identical to the first line with some minor variations. Now to start off this E minor shape, we played the open sixth string, but this time that open sixth string is on the one beat. So I'm saying that the first three bars are going to be exactly the same as what we had in the first line. Now where it starts differing is gonna be highlighted up here in the tabs. Instead of going and doing our lick, like this, we're gonna keep holding on to that G chord after that slap on the four beat. On the end beat after that four, we hit the sixth string by itself. And then we're gonna pluck the second and third strings together on the end beat after the one, slap on the two, and then we're gonna go to a D slash F sharp like this. So your index finger goes on the second fret of the sixth middle finger goes on the second fret of the third. You'll pinch the sixth, third and second strings all together at the same time. That's on the end beat after the two. And then we end with a slap on the four beat. Now after that slap on the four beat, we go back to an E minor shape and play an open sixth string just by itself. So in total, the second line of tab will just sound like this. One and two. Now notice that that very last note, the open sixth string that's played on the end beat after the four, that is going to loop us back to the start of this verse. Our lead in note is technically just that open sixth string on the end beat after the four. So then we can just loop it again and again. So we have that end beat after the four, which is down at the bottom. And then we're gonna loop back up to the top and play our slap and flick on the two beat and one and two and and then we just repeat the process again and again for the verse that's it for the verse riff so as i said it is a little confusing but if you break it down bit by bit take it slow you should be able to get it so in total it'll sound like this one and two and three and four and Now we get to the pre-chorus and this is gonna be a little easier because I have simplified some of the timing here 
Now, in the recording, and if Ed Sheeran plays it live, sometimes he will play things and chord changes on the upbeat. Sometimes he plays it on the downbeat. You never really know with Ed Sheeran, so I have tried to simplify it here so it's a little simpler to learn. Now, we're going to start with an A minor 7 chord shape just like this. So it's the same as a C, except you won't have your ring finger down. We're going to be pinching the 5th, 3rd, and 2nd strings together. And you'll do that with your thumb, index, and middle finger. So pinch that on the 1. We have a normal slap on the two, then we're gonna be playing the fourth, third, and second strings, all one after the other, and then we have another slap. That all sounds like this. One, and two, and three, and four. And then we're gonna go to a C chord, so put your ring finger down from this A minor seven shape, and then we're going to be pinching the fifth, third, and second strings. That's on the end beat after the four. And then we're waiting until the two beat of the next bar, slapping, and then we're playing the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings again by themselves and slapping on that 4 beat. So all together that pattern sounds like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Then we're going to a G chord shape. Now in terms of rhythm and timing, all our notes are going to be exactly the same. The only difference here is that we're staying on this G chord the whole time and our bass note is now the sixth string. And that will sound like this for the G chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now when we get to the second line of tab, first and second bar are the same as the first and second bar of the first line. When we get to our third bar, from our C chord shape, we're just sliding this whole shape up two frets. Now we're just gonna call this shape a D for simplicity. You're going to be pinching the 5th, 3rd and 2nd strings together on the 1, slap on the 2, pluck the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings and then slap again on the 4 beat and then on the end bit after the 4 we pinch those strings again so it's nice and easy. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And that's it for the pre-chorus. So in total it sounds like this. Moving on to the chorus, and thankfully the chorus we've already pretty much learned because it's the same as the second line of tab we had in the verse. Now the only difference here is that we do start our E minor and the open sixth string on the end beat after the four. It's not occurring on the one beat. But everything else will remain the same. And remember, at the very end, for this very last note, that open sixth string on the end beat after the four, that loops us back into the start of this riff. So all together for the chorus, it will sound like this. One and two and three and four. And you keep repeating again and again. Then we get to the second verse, which is the same as the first verse. I will note one little variation that we'll make though. As we come in for the second verse, we are going to start on the one beat. So it's a little confusing there, but we will start on the one beat there. But then we will revert back to our normal timing. Finally, the last thing I'll teach you is the bridge. Now for the bridge, we'll start with a D chord shape like this. Now we'll be pinching the 4th, 3rd, 2nd and 1st strings all together, so we need a combination of all these fingers. So we'll pinch all of them, slap on the 2 beat, and then you'll pluck the 3rd, 2nd and 1st strings by themselves, slap on the 4 beat, and then we go to a C add 9. And so far, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Go to the C add 9, we're going to do a similar thing, we're going to pinch the 5th, 3rd and 2nd strings together, slap on the 2 beat, and then pluck the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, and then slap on the 4 beat. So for the C add 9, and 
one and two and three and four. And beat after that four, we go to an E minor seven chord shape. So keep your ring finger where it is. Index and middle go on second fret of the fifth and the fourth strings. We'll pinch the sixth string, third and second together on the end beat after the four. Then we'll wait until the two beat, slap on that, and then pluck four, third and second strings, slap on the four beat, and then we go to the G chord shape. And we're doing the same thing essentially in terms of timing. And all together for the first line will sound like this. Now we'll play that first line through twice and then we have our second line of tab which is just a C chord. We're starting on the one beat by pinching the fifth, third and second strings together. Slap on the two, pluck the fourth, third and second strings, slap on the four beat. Move this shape two frets up to what we'll just call a D chord shape. Pinch the fifth, third and second strings together. Slap on the two beat, pluck the fourth, third and second strings slap on the four beat and then we end by pinching that one last time on the end beat after the four so the second line in total will sound like this one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's it for the bridge and then we have another chorus and then our outro which is just the chords of the verse and the chorus, but we're just gonna strum them out one at a time. So our E minor, our E minor add nine, C add nine, and then our G. So that's it for the harder finger-picked version of this song. Now I'll teach you the easy strummed chords if you're just the singer and you wanna strum along and sing. Now this version is a whole lot easier, so most of you should be able to get it. Now for our verse and chorus chord progression, we have an E minor chord shape like this. Then we go to an E minor add nine chord shape. So lift your middle finger, ring finger goes on the fourth fret of the fourth string. E minor add nine, then we have C, and then we have G. Now for this easy strum version, we have one strumming pattern that we're gonna use throughout the whole song. This is a longer strumming pattern, but it is still simple enough. So it sounds like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And in succession, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Now up here in the annotations, you'll see for the verse and the chorus where each chord needs to be. So for that first strumming pattern, we have E minor, E minor add nine, and C add nine, all within the one same strumming pattern. And the point at which you're changing chords are all highlighted in the annotations as well. When we go to the G, that has its own strumming pattern. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So that's it for the verse. You just repeat that again and again. Really nice and easy. But just make sure you're changing chords at the right spots. Next we get to the pre-chorus and we have two lines of tab here. We start with the A minor seven and then we go to a C. Now that's all contained within one strumming pattern and then we have a G for one full strumming pattern. And the point at which you're gonna change chords for the A minor seven to the C is on that third up strum which is highlighted. So down. And then for the second line of tab, we have A minor seven to the C, which is the same as the first line. Then we're gonna go up to what I'm just gonna to refer to as a D chord shape. So it's the same shape as a C, you just slide your fingers up two frets. Now that's gonna be played for a shortened amount of the strumming pattern. It's just down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And in total, the pre-chorus sounds like this. If 
Finally, we get to the bridge. We have two lines of chords here. We have a D. We're going to start with a D, and then we go to a C add 9. Now, the point at which you change chords is again on that third up strum for that strumming pattern. And then we go to an E minor 7 for the next strumming pattern, and then we go to a G. And that first line all together will sound like this. Now we're going to repeat that first line through twice and then our second line of chords just goes C and then to our altered D chord shape, which sounds like this. So there you have it guys, two ways of playing Small Bump by Ed Sheeran. This will be a really good challenge for a lot of you guys, but of course if you just wanted chords to strum and sing along, then that easy version should take care of that as well. Now I'll be playing through two different versions, the recorded finger-picked version and the easy version, and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to, to practice play along to and see how you go.
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Be sure to head over to guitarzerohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you're stuck in a rut and you want to take your guitar to the next level, then be sure to check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. 
follow me on Instagram, follow my second YouTube channel, Guitar Zero to Hero Express. Leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.